Hi, this is Maginoni, and uh, my friend and I, Fu, we went to uh, Dark Scares. It's a uh, haunted house that's located off of Dobson in that big shopping plaza that's right near the Loop 202 um, in between Bass Pro Shop and uh, Cinemark. Uh, it's right near Howie's Game Shack also. Now, I was very, very worried about Dark Scares. I was thinking, this is going to be a disaster. I've heard really bad things, not a lot of good things about it, so I was really worried about it. Now, um, with Dark Scares, it's $15 to get in for an adult, and that was another thing I was thinking, oh my goodness, what, what am I getting myself into? This is what I can tell you about Dark Scares. Uh, they do a lot of things right, and it's it's just missing a little bit. Well, I mean, it's a lot when you add it all up, but it's but it it it's not. Again, it, this is one of those uh, haunted houses that's not out there to uh, give you a scare a minute based on different themes. It you know going from let's say you know a swamp thing to a uh, cemetery to snakes to zombies to werewolves to vampires. Uh, to cannibal rednecks to clowns. It's nothing like one of those types of haunted houses that doesn't really have an identity. Uh, Dark Scares has a theme. They stick with the entire theme. And I think uh, they do a lot of things right with it. Uh, in this case, what the theme is is um, a haunted hotel. Now, uh, when you go in, the guy gives you the speech, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, don't touch. We, you know, we don't touch people. They won't touch you. Don't run, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Really nice, very nice person. When you go in, he opens the door when they're ready for you, and what you see is a hotel lobby, and it really like when I when we walked in, we were just like looking around, going, oh "My goodness, this is just so cool." Um, it just had this really nice, uh, like look, the decor, the feeling about it was great. The guy behind the counter. You know who uh, you know takes your information, gives you the keys. It was great. Uh, he he played the part of the guy who doesn't give an f about his job anymore. Everybody annoys him. Um, your just your presence is annoying him, um, and he couldn't give two flying f's like I said about what's going to happen to you inside the the hotel. Um, he did a fantastic job. He was probably one of the best actors I've seen in any of our Arizona haunted houses so far. He would definitely rank up there, the, the part he played. Uh, eventually, um, a bellhop comes, and then they t he takes you to the, you know, your room, so to speak. Now, I'm, I'm leaving things out just so this way it it's fresh for anybody else who sees it. Now, from here, you go through a corridors and you go to the room, different types of rooms and things like that. And this is where it kind of goes into a standard type haunted house where things, you know, people jump out and scare you. Um, but this is where I think that some of their strengths are and this is where some of their weaknesses are. Um, a, since this is a hotel theme, you, you'll see things like hotel rooms, you see like uh, dining rooms. Um, you'll see like a casino like thing, a bar, um, various rooms like that. But a lot of these rooms unfortunately are empty. And this is where I see it, it just un it's just wasted potential. Uh, like for an example, there's a bar. And in the bar, you have like a piano that's playing music. And you, you know that's recording because you know, the keys aren't even moving. It's not an animatronic or anything. And like I was waiting for a bartender to show up, but there's no bartender. It's just an empty room. I think it would have been great to have a bartender there, like a zombie-ish ghost. I mean, what I mean by zombie, I mean just somebody who who um, has the bartender like uniform on and he talks to you, looks like an undead person maybe, and then you know offers you the drink. Um, you know, something like that would have been great. Some kind of interaction. Uh, there's also another spot where there's like. Like casino machines, like slot machines, nothing. Nobody's there. Um, it would have been great if maybe somebody was sitting there, offers you to sit down and play a few games. You know, 
you know, you can play up the, you know, you're playing with your soul type thing. Because he's, he's been playing there since, you know, hundreds, hundreds of years. Because it, the aura of the hotel is like a, like an older style hotel. And um, I think that would have definitely played up with, you know, things like that. Um, you know, maybe have a sauna. Or uh, where's the baby? You know, baby crying. You know, would have while there were dead people, you know, people all bloodied up in the different hotel rooms. It would have been nice to see, like maybe somebody hanging, um, maybe even like uh, where are the creepy kids. You know, maybe you don't have, you can't have kids, but maybe you have like um, a st like a statue or something like that down a hallway that you know, you know, something like that to to scare you with, and. Um, those they see like those types of things would have been you know I think would have added a lot of flavor to it also I think another thing that was lacking is you have situations where there's where you go into a room and you don't quite know where to go because there's no clear uh, marking to say hey that's the door over there I think uh, maybe having a different color like a black or maybe instead of having black cloth maybe have black uh, plastic the black plastic is where you're always going or for that matter I wish there were doors doors that you had to open and that would have been great but um, so it's like I said it's these little things along the way that that I think really impact um, was impacting my enjoyment of it now one thing that they picked up on really quick and I applaud them with is when we're going through my friend Fu she shouted out my name and all of a sudden, all these actors are picking up, going, he's coming, he's, Joe's coming, you know, and I'm like, oh, I see. So I called, I said her name, and then they picked that up really quick, and then they started shouting out both of our names. So I think um, that was fantastic. Now, it happened for a while, and then eventually it stopped, but I think one of two things were what was going on. One is, they knew we weren't scared, so kind of like, what's the point? And two... Um, certain people might not have heard it. And be there's also, like I said, there's gaps where there's just nobody there. I mean, there's people there that are trying to, like, uh, scare you in the hallways and things like that. But, it, you know, like, it's the rooms. You know, I really wanted more stuff in the rooms. And they couldn't, they didn't have, an, I don't think they had opportunities with the way their layout is to really enhance that, which is a shame. Uh, now, while I did spend a lot of time knocking it, uh, I don't mean it to make it sound like this is a horrible haunted house. If, if you're really looking for something that's oh, different, something that gives you a theme, something that... Um, it, see, it's not even telling a story, but something that offers you something different than the higher-end, you know, animatronic-type haunted houses, I would definitely give uh, Dark scares a, a try. Um, if you go in there with in, a friend, make sure you shout their name out at some point, make it a conversation thing, and that way they'll pick on that and then they'll they'll start calling out their name. Um, I think um, if they just improved on it a little bit, you know, maybe, I, I don't know if there was limitations with the actors, in meaning they didn't have enough, or maybe there might be monetary limitations or building code limitations. Um, so I think something, um, if they could get past any of that, uh, they really have, they can really make this into something stellar. Um, another problem I had is the ending was very weak. Um, there, there, somebody there is at the end to scare you, but it's not the you know, the chainsaw guy chasing you out the room type thing. Now, I don't think you always need a chainsaw to chase people out, but th this is definitely one of those situations where you just walk out. Also, since the exit is really far away from the entrance, uh, nobody sees anybody leave. So, on one hand, I guess you can say, well, that's great because the premise is you check in, but you never check out. But on the other hand, I go, well... Um, you don't have that, you know, you can't build up fear by having somebody constantly running out 
every so many minutes. So that was kind of a disappointment. But anyways, um, if you um, if you're budget conscious, give it a try. Uh, we did hear girls screaming ahead of us, so uh, you know you will you will get startled, and there there are some scream moments. But it's not oh it's not as scary, but it's definitely very creepy at times. So for that, I do give them um, I applaud them for that. Anyways, if you have any comments or questions, let me know. I rate the video up or down. Let me know what you think. Um, like the Facebook link. I give out comic books. And then there's other videos from my other channels I post there. And we'll have more reviews and stuff later. Uh, so until next time.